Hello folks, my name is Dr. Zachary Hildenbrand. I'm here with my colleague, Dr. Kevin Shug, and we are the Collaborative Laboratories for Environmental Analysis and Remediation at the University of Texas at Arlington. We're coming to you from the uh, Responsible Shale Energy Extraction Conference, which is a very unique event, bringing together scientists, concerned citizens, operators, regulators, and technology companies to have an honest series of conversations about environmental stewardship in shale energy. We'd really like to thank the support of the Cynthia and George Mitchell Foundation and Earth Day Texas for allowing us to put on this event. Uh, we believe that this content that we're going to be providing to those who haven't been able to attend is going to help answer and educate a lot of questions surrounding responsible shale energy extraction. So we hope you enjoy the content. One of the things that we've been able to do uh, with a Clear is, is to uh, start to interface with um, some water providers and, and some groups that are, are very interested in water recycling technology, water reuse, uh, reuse systems and, and programs. And uh, through some of the interactions I had, I was brought to my attention a, a very interesting and I think a timely partnership um, that was developed, a public-private partnership. And so, um, you know, I, I felt that that was a really important thing to communicate here. So, uh, um, John Durand and, and uh, Richard Morton were, were kind enough to come here and, and to discuss this with us to kind of give an idea of what the future of water use looks like, in this case, in the Permian Basin. Um, John Durand is he is a uh, currently now with Waterbridge Researches, Waterbridge Resources. He's the uh, president and CEO. But prior to that, he was working with uh, Pioneer Water and and, and uh, directing their their water uh, program, uh, water reuse program. And Richard Morton is the uh, city manager for Odessa, and um, they were had a chance to get together and, and figure out how might they work together to solve some mutual problems. So um, I ask just to kind of start because I've only really learned this, but um, maybe could uh, one of you uh, first start to kind of summarize what the water issue is in the Permian Basin. What I understand is, is there's you know, just not enough of it out there and, and those, those producers that are plan on using fresh water, well, they're not gonna be in business very long if they, they try to do that out there. Sure. Um, Hi everybody, I'm Richard. Um, I'll start with just some background on where we started with the city of Odessa. Um, I've been in Odessa since 1998 and our uh, three primary water sources are three lakes and they are about 100 miles away from Odessa. And over that time, we saw a, a decline in the level of those lakes. Um, so much so that in 2013, we were looking at two of the lakes were 99% empty. Um, for the optimists out there, uh, they were 1% full. Um, the other lake was about 14% full. So um, we were in dire straits. We also have a well field for water um, out in Ward County and it is in an aquifer that does not recharge. So if we pulled water out of it, uh, we were basically mining the water. So I was tasked as city manager to go out and find additional water sources, not just for today, but for the future, 100 years into the future, for Odessa. And um, Odessa, uh, in treating our wastewater, um, we were ahead of the game in how we did that. We, we already treated it to the, to the extent that we could um, put it on some of our neighborhood um, um, uh, for irrigations, we sold it to the golf courses, we sold it um, to uh, the university there in town. So um, we had been doing that for quite some time. But in looking at our future needs for water, it became evident that uh, we were going to need additional funds to develop another water source. And we looked at what we were, we were selling in that toilet water, wastewater, we call it reuse water. And uh, during the summer, we would sell a lot of it. In the winter, we would put it all down the draw or, or the creek. And so in late 2013, we developed a, a request for proposals um, to put out to see if there was uh, any interest in the oil field in using our water. We were very aware of what was happening in the oil field with a, uh, the change in technology to move from just vertical drilling to horizontal drilling in our area 
and we thought that maybe that water would be uh, much more valuable in the oil field. So, and we saw it again as, as wastewater, it's not potable water. And, and again, we knew that the state legislature was moving towards putting pressure on uh, the oil companies to use less fresh water. So we thought it was a win-win. So we put out a request for proposal and uh, we received basically three proposals. Pioneer was one of those proposals. We, we got that uh, proposal back from them in February of 2014, and uh, seven, uh, seven short months later of uh, negotiations with, with Pioneer, we had a deal. Obviously for Odessa, we wanted a long-term deal. Uh, we wanted a 20-year deal, um, a take or pay, where it was a guaranteed revenue source, so I could take that revenue and leverage it to go out and find additional water sources. Um, Pioneer had a different ideal. They, they were looking for a much shorter term. And uh, so through some negotiations, we wound up with a very good deal. For, um, and we wound up with initially a 10-year deal with two five-year options. Um, the 10-year deal was guaranteed to the city, um, take or pay, of about $114 million, which is a, a very good amount. And if the two five-year options are uh, enacted upon, then the city of Odessa could be looking at an additional or total about 255 million if Pioneer just sticks with the minimum purchase. So that is much needed revenue for us to go out and find additional fresh water. It's a win-win for them because they're, they're able to use wastewater in their drilling. And with that, I'm gonna turn it over to John he can tell you a little bit about the Pioneer side, and then we might just ask, answer questions back and forth. Sounds good. Thanks, Richard. Uh, real quickly, I do want to thank the Mitchell Foundation, as well as the great work that uh, CLEAR is doing here uh, in putting this symposium on. Really appreciate it. I think it's been a great program. Look forward to the uh, program next year. To carry on with what Richard uh, was talking, the, the Pioneer side, I've been very fortunate uh, now to, to work for two, uh, on the management team of two water management companies in what is a uh, very early stages of what could be a, a, a burgeoning uh, industry, not just for industrial wastewater and industrial use, but, but uh, in the water space uh, in general. Uh, the relationship that we cultivated uh, at Pioneer when I was there uh, with the city was very unique. And, and, and very strong, and it remains strong as, as testament to the fact that Richard and I are great friends and sitting here today telling the story. Uh, you know, I, I think about private-public partnerships, and when you think about it on paper, uh, when, the, when an opportunity comes about that a private-public partnership is appropriate, you would think about 95% of the time, logically, the parties should find a way to make that work. Probably the inverse is true, and I, and I, might, be, I might be over uh, hyping that a little bit, but uh, one of the most satisfying parts of, of getting this deal done with the city of Odessa was uh, the fact that it was truly a win-win, and I'll even throw another win in there. It was a win for the city, uh, and, and, and what Richard uh, masterminded there uh, to take something as ordinary uh, necessary and mundane as a wastewater plant and turn it into a revenue generation source. Uh, my hat's off to Richard and his team at the city for doing that. Uh, it was a win clearly for Pioneer because uh, as we formed Pioneer Water Management, uh, still to this day the only standalone water company uh, owned by an E&P company in the industry, uh, the focus has been on environmental stewardship. The focus has been on getting off of fresh water and, and that immediately led uh, our discussions to, to, to work with the city of Odessa. And, and as Richard said, we concluded negotiations and, and in, in my mind, even though I'm no longer at Pioneer, I'd be very surprised if uh, as long as Pioneer is drilling in the Midland Basin, uh, their primary water source will be that of the city of Odessa. And that's really a good thing. And the third win I talked about is really for the for the uh, ratepayers and for the citizens of, of Richard's community, because uh, because of the efforts and the revenue that's uh, going to be coming in over the years for, from this contract, 
that that is going to create some great opportunity, not only for for the city of Odessa to go out and find the next fresh water resource for the next 50, 75 years for the for the city as it grows, but also is going to uh, provide some uh, some great things for the community. So uh, again, it's 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 great when a private public partnership comes together uh, as this one did. Yeah, it, it sounded to me like a, a, a situation to emulate, I mean, especially if you have to find every source for reuse. We had uh, discussions earlier about uh, how little you know we recycle water and reuse water here in the U.S. and with the rate of development that's going to be in the Permian Basin it seems absolutely essential. I mean, is it is this a, a first of a kind type of a situation? Uh, you know, are there, were you basing this on any other models? Uh, I'll, I'll start with that answer. Uh, the answer really is, is, is no, Kevin. Uh, there, there really wasn't a model. As Richard said, they issued the RFP. Uh, it, again, Pioneer uh, having a, a, a pretty dominant position in the heart of the Midland Basin, very proximate to the city and its wastewater plant. It made all the sense in the world for, the, for Pioneer to, to be aggressive, and, and we were fortunate to, to win the RFP and the opportunity to contract. Uh, Similarly, uh, while I was at Pioneer, I also had the opportunity to work with the city of Midland in a similar but, but also unique opportunity. Uh, and some of you may have heard about that. Uh, but I tell Richard, his was the first and is still the dearest to my heart, but I, I did negotiate with the city of Midland on behalf of Pioneer. The difference was this. Uh, Richard had a secondary treatment plant, as he described, that was ready to uh, sell us as a customer water immediately. Midland, a uh, different story. No secondary treatment uh, plant at the city of Midland. So we negotiated not only with them a, a future water purchase agreement, but also a design and construction of a wastewater, secondary wastewater treatment plant that will be in place maybe in late 2019, 2020. And, and that will be another, another source, again, sticking to Pioneer's plan for environmental stewardship, using uh, non-potable water, and, and, and having that be a significant part of their portfolio. In my new role uh, with the new company, uh, I, I'm really going to be doing a lot of the same things with this company as we did with Pioneer Water Management looking at opportunities in multiple basins, not just in the Permian Basin, but looking at opportunities to work with municipalities. Because I think that, again, I go back, you can't ask for a better outcome when you can have a revenue stream for a local city. Uh, it, it can't but help relations with the community when you can provide that. Uh, because as we all know, we've heard here a little bit today, uh, there's some uh, there's a lot of discussion and concern over um, exploration in, 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 uh, in any neighborhood, in any community. So to the extent that you can turn that into a, a, a revenue source for a municipality, I think it's great. It's something I will continue to look at as we move forward with WaterBridge. Yeah, John's, um, he said it for me, but one of the key things that we were looking for was a way to uh, fund a new, a new water source without impacting our ratepayers or lessening that ratepayer. And we've been able to do that. We also sit in the heart of the Permian Basin. We have long been part of the oil field. And I'd say 40% of our economy is still based on the oil and gas industry. So we've had excellent relationships um, with, the, with the different oil companies throughout the years. And our citizens have, have come to have that same relationship. So when you uh, so when you have this uh, proposal process, and I just trying to understand this more, were, the, were you getting all, were all of the RFPs from different oil and gas uh, companies? Uh, to the extent that you can share some of this, I mean, sure, um, absolutely. I think all three were from different oil companies, and so we were blessed to have the three and to have a choice, and uh, we narrowed it down to Pioneer and uh, had a very good negotiation with them. Of course, we were already selling the water, but we were selling it at a, it was more, it wasn't seen as a revenue source, but as a, a green way to deal with our wastewater. And um, it, it occurred to us that 
there was a, ch a chance for increased revenue, and that was very important to our citizens. Yeah, I, I, I'm ashamed to say I have not been to Odessa, but uh, it's it, beyond my list. Uh, and, and so I, I guess I would love to hear what you think, I mean, in terms of the, what will you do with this money? I mean, what kind of impact will it have on the community? Sure. Well, as I said, our primary uh, sources of water are is lake water, and uh, the, the entire state's been blessed with some rain, but we are still wary of the, of the surface supply. So we continue to, to hunt for additional sources, groundwater sources, and uh, um, there are some excellent sources out in West Texas. I think you probably heard some of that in earlier sessions. Um, but we're also looking at one thing I've, I've, I've heard uh, since I've been city manager in Odessa forever is the taste and the quality of the water coming from the lakes. And this will give us an opportunity to uh, explore treating that water with an, with an RO system and improving the quality of water for our citizens as well. So I have, I have one uh, nice question here from the audience. Uh, so uh, what effect does your partnership have on the, the draw where the water would have been released? Does the, is there some concern that the downstream will get less water because of this and the impacts of that? No. Um, Actually, that, that hasn't been an issue at all. Um, the minimum take, we generate about 8 million gallons a day of wastewater. Uh, we siphon off about 2 million of that and send it to an industrial wastewater um, facility because they need the bugs uh, to treat some of the industrial water that they get. Um, so we wind up with about 6 million gallons a day. In the summer, traditionally, that was always used and we were pumping about 3 million down the draw. But, um, it evaporates fairly quickly in West Texas. Um, so I'll read this verbatim. Is it more cost effective to sell wastewater and use Pioneer's money to find new water sources than to find a way to treat the wastewater and use it as drinking water? That's, a, that's an excellent question and one we asked ourselves. Um, but look at the volume. Uh, we're going to sell six million. I can use the revenue generated by the Pioneer contract and go find um, a long-term supply and we were looking for an additional 50 million gallons a day for a hundred years. And um, I don't want just six million gallons a day. I need more than that for Odessa's future. And so it was in our minds much better to leverage uh, this wastewater, um, supply it to an oil company that Instead of using fresh water, they'll use wastewater and provide a revenue source for Odessa. Uh, John, maybe you could kind of comment on this. I mean, and now you're outside of Pioneer, but you know, does Pioneer really think, like, boy, well, this is giving us a, a strong hold in the area? I mean, over our competitors. I mean, how, how much of, a, of an advantage is this partnership for Pioneer in, in, the, in the area? Well, it's a huge advantage uh, on, on a lot of counts. Uh, for, for one, you know, the, the roots of the company, Pioneer, even though it's now headquartered here in Irving, Texas, uh, Pioneer's roots go back to a company uh, called uh, Parker & Parsley, which was a Midland, Odessa-based company. And so from that standpoint, uh, Pioneer has always uh, held a, a great reputation uh, within the community. And uh, it, again, because of its acreage position in the Midland Basin, Pioneer is in the Permian, but only in the Midland Basin, about 850,000 acres. So given that, uh, the contract with, with, uh, with, with Odessa, the future opportunity uh, with Midland, uh, the balance of what Pioneer is going to be doing is looking at reuse of, of some of that same water. They're also uh, currently while those facilities are being contemplated and put in place, they're also uh, drilling uh, at great expense, by the way, compared to freshwater wells. Uh, Santa Rosa formation, which is uh, brackish, uh, not currently usable for, for, any other, um, for, for any other use. And, and quite frankly, uh, for, the, uh, for the landowners who benefit from uh, Pioneer and any other operator drilling for that brackish source. That's, that is a great revenue source for those individual landowners and ranch owners as well. So it, it's really a boost to the economy 
in many ways all the way around. But uh, again, I, th I think Pioneer was very wise to go out and partner with uh, the city of Odessa in the manner that it did. You don't have that opportunity in, in every area to do that. And as a first mover advantage, uh, Pioneer uh, was able to accomplish that. And Odessa is very glad that uh, Pioneer uh, moved forward with Midland. Um, because that, again, you're using their wastewater, you will be come 2020, um, and that's just that much more fresh water that, again, that will be available for the municipalities. Um, Richard, uh, this is a clarification, or asking a clarification. Did, did you say the lakes had fallen to 1%? 1%. And that was all from residential use? Um, the reality in West Texas is we lose more to evaporation every year than we use. And that's why, um, yeah, it hit 99% empty or 1% full on those two lakes, Lake Spence and Lake Thomas. Lake Ivy is a little bit bigger, and it, was, it had gotten down to 14% full. Um, again, we, use, we lose more evaporation than we use, and we use about 19 million gallons a day on average, 365. Um, so, yeah, it, it was critical. Um, and as I said, we had a backup in the Ward County field where we can pump 45 million gallons a day from the Ward County field, but that's, a, that's an aquifer that does not recharge. And the fear there is if we relied solely on it, um, we would draw it down. And that, so we're going to use every drop of the, fresh, of the lake water before we hit the well field. John. Um, can you speak a little bit to, you talked about the Santa Rosa, so how, how bountiful are these brackish resources? Uh, great question. Uh, Pioneer did a lot of study and a lot of companies, uh, I know have done a lot of study in the Permian Basin on, on brackish uh, aquifers and, and, and reservoirs to, to, to get away from fresh water. Uh, what I can tell you about the, the studies I'm familiar with is the Santa Rosa formation is ubiquitous throughout the, the Midland Basin area, uh, specifically the Pioneer acreage and a buffer around that, probably a, a million or so acres was studied. Uh, that being said, you, uh, depending on where you drill in, in that roughly longitudinal, longitudinally, I'll call that about a 90 to 100 mile north-south uh, span of acreage, about 50 or 60 miles east-west in the heart of the Midland Basin. Uh, you can get very different results uh, based, on, based on where you drill. There, there's, uh, you will hit the Santa Rosa formation. Uh, sometimes you'll make a, a well, a, a good well might have an initial production of, of 5,000 barrels per day. Uh, it'll tail off over time, but uh, it's, it's viewed as a, a, a longer lived resource than a, a freshwater well, which would be drilled down to three or four hundred feet. Most of these Santa Rosa wells are anywhere from 1,200 to 2,000 feet deep in the Midland Basin. Um, <clears throat> I know I've talked to John a little bit, you know, this, this partnership seemed like it, it, it kind of just developed and went well, you know, great RFP. Then you did, uh, you know, working together with, uh, with, with Midland to do something similar, and I know that involved uh, even Pioneer constructing a water treatment plant. Now you're moving into your own uh, water bridge resources and, and saying, you told me, you know, I'm going to do this for a living to collaborate these public-private partnerships. I mean, what's the, what's the variation? I mean, what's the big barriers to, to doing this? And, you know, how, you know, how many other instances of this can be done, and, and you know, where is it? Um, you know, I've been involved with partnerships and sometimes it just clicks and works and sometimes it can't be done. And, and where, where does this type of a, of a partnership to, you know, for water use rely on that continuum? Well, it's interesting and I appreciate the question. Uh, in my career in the energy business, um, uh, about four or five years ago, I was working for a company uh, pre-Pioneer in the Marcellus and Utica up in Pennsylvania and Ohio. We had a similar opportunity to work with a, a local municipality in, in, in drilling some, some, some water wells up in that area. Uh, different rules in different states, different rules in different uh, producing basins, uh, to be sure, regulations as well as local rules. Uh, clearly, when you're in West Texas and you're prone to the kind of drought conditions that uh, 
we had back uh, a few years back that was, well, Richard, maybe a seven-year drought, did we call it? Uh, I think it was as bad in our area as the drought of the 1950s. And, it, and again, it wasn't just West Texas, it was all over the state, if you recall. But we had been watching those lake levels drop for, for years and years. Yes. So, uh, again, my, my experience at Pioneer as, I, as, as, as we look at, at, at doing a, a very similar program and, and, and run a similar water management services, all things water uh, company, uh, we, will, we will be looking first and foremost at always trying to do things the green way. And, and I, th I think we've proven with this partnership, working with municipalities in, 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 a, in a fashion, even if you're not able to immediately tap into a resource that a municipality has, it, it's just so important uh, to, to work closely with the community and work uh, in, in, a, in a concerted uh, manner together to, uh, to extract the best results. I think toilet to tap is one of the questions that was asked earlier, um, is very viable for some communities. Um, uh, what the city of Odessa was doing prior to what we're doing today was treating that water secondarily and providing it for irrigation purposes throughout the community. I think that's an excellent use of the water for some cities. I, I think West Texas and the, and the oil play are happening at the same time. And um, so we, to answer that question, I don't know that uh, every city can do this because they may, may not be in the position to sell that water to, to the oil company or, or there may not be a play near there. But the city can do other things to use that water wisely. Um, <clears throat> so, gentlemen, I'm afraid I am going to have to cut this a little bit short. I, I've, I've been under a little bit of pressure. I mean, maybe you've heard the, uh, the rumble that's going on out there. Apparently. Uh, Mr. Pruitt is going to need the use of this stage to address the audience. So we're going to cut this a little bit short and forego our final uh, remarks on today. Um, I'd like please join me in thanking uh, John Duran and Richard Morton for sharing their perspectives. Uh, I really appreciate you taking the time to come out here. Um, and and I'm going I'm to close this up quickly because again we're under a little bit of pressure and to beating off the Earth Day people to, to let us finish this out. Um, tomorrow, we start in the morning. Uh, we have a morning session. Uh, we have a, uh, there is an exhibition and a whole set of, of interesting research posters that are over in the automotive building. Uh, I'll also tell you that even right now, if you're inclined to go figure out where that is, they're serving cocktails in the automotive building that uh, you're uh, allowed to go and, and join into as being part of this conference. Um, but, but please, uh, tomorrow we have a morning session program. I think we have some other great topics. I mean, the content today has been, I think, phenomenal. I really appreciate you guys uh, being here. I, I mean, of course, the, the sponsorship to do this by the Mitchell Foundation has been absolutely key to, uh, so far, the success and the you know, first time of trying to put together a program like this. Um, so please come back and join us tomorrow, but even before that, please come and join us. Uh, you know, if you may be, might be interested to stick around to hear what uh, Mr. Pruitt has to say, uh, but please join us tomorrow and, and come also over to the automotive building and see what we're doing in research. So uh, thank you very much for coming, and we'll, we'll adjourn the session for today.